In a previous video, I demonstrated the use of expressions in FreeCAD using a Class 150 flange design as an example. And somebody commented, well, why don't you just use a configuration table for that? So that's what we're going to do in this video using both the spreadsheet workbench and part design workbench. Now, one of the reasons that I did not use a configuration table initially is because I think the use of expressions is one of the first things you need to know in order to use a configuration table in the spreadsheet workbench and also because if you're designing a custom part where you don't really know what the final configuration is going to be but you know that certain dimensions rely on other dimensions probably the use of just pure expressions is sufficient. Uh, the highlighted parts in this table show the three configurations that I was able to do using just expressions but in this video we're going to design this flange uh, so that such that we can change between any of the configurations listed here so just as a reminder a class 150 flange has an outside diameter a bolt circle diameter an inner diameter a hole diameter and a thickness and all of those are dependent on the nominal pipe size here so I've actually got this table in an Excel sheet off screen and I'm going to copy down this full set of numbers for use later in FreeCAD. Another reason that I did not show the use of a configuration table in my previous video is because I was using FreeCAD 0.19 and the spreadsheet workbench in FreeCAD 0.19 does not support the use of configuration tables. So I had to update to 0.20.2 and if you need to do that you can go to uh, this website here so let's open up FreeCAD here uh, version 0.20.2 create a new document and we'll open up the uh, spreadsheet workbench and then create a spreadsheet and I'm going to, to go down to cell A4 here and I'm going to control V all of those numbers that I copied from my uh, spreadsheet from my Excel spreadsheet so then I'm going to go back to my Excel spreadsheet which is again just uh, off the screen here and I'm going to copy my headers and I'm going to place them here now you'll notice I've got this empty row here and that's where I'm going to put together my configuration table so every time I call my spreadsheet I'm going to call this row so I can fill this row with any one of these configurations to begin with so I'm just going to start with this uh, first configuration the half inch diameter so I'm going to type in uh, I'm just going to copy those numbers and then um, when I call this it needs to, I need to be calling its alias so you can see up here that there's an alias tab here so I'm going to give each of these cells the alias of uh, an alias equivalent to the column header. So here I'm going to call this thickness and for whatever reason uh, spreadsheet doesn't like T so I'll just call it thick. And you can see that when I come off of it it's, it's turned itself yellow which means that it has an alias. So here I'll give this the alias OD ID and it also doesn't like the pound sign so I'm gonna call this num holes and this will be case sensitive so remember that I'm I left that holes uh, capitalized HD and this alias is BC and now you see we've still got this one empty cell here this is where we're gonna set up our configuration table so if I right click here if you're in a version of FreeCAD earlier than 0.20, the only thing that will pop up is property. So you have to install FreeCAD uh, 0.20 or, uh, or later, and then you'll get all these other options. So I'm going to go to configuration table. And I don't really care if it goes to ZZ3 or just to G3, but I'm going to set it up for G3. And I'm going to name my property. I can name it anything I want as long as there's no spaces in it. I'm going to name uh, my property nominal size uh, because that's going to eventually be a drop down. That I'm going to 
choose which of these configurations I want based on my nominal pipe size and so my drop down menu is going to be named based on this property nominal size and I'm going to name my group class 150 dimensions and that will be uh, the header for the drop down menu now if I click OK I'm going to get a couple of error messages and I thought that that would be useful for you to see so let's say OK first thing it says is it expel, expects A4 to be a string and I've got a bunch of numbers all in column A so I need to fix that uh, let's cancel out of here and in order to, to change these numbers to a string I can just type in this apostrophe in front of it and that'll change it to a string so I gotta do that all the way down here. Okay, my whole uh, column A is now strings. Let's go see if I can uh, set up my configuration table this time. Okay, and then this is another one that I don't really understand, but it's easy enough to fix. It says uh, we expect A26 to be a string. So if we go down to A26, that's just that's just the last cell here, and it expects that to be a string, so I'll just say not applicable. And try one more time. and you should know that you can name your properties and groups whatever you want to name them uh, the property is going to I, I usually name the property whatever my cell A column header is and then what is it that that uh, gives me it gives me my class 150 uh, cell dimensions uh, which is what I name my group so let's click OK and it accepted that cool so now let's go build our part okay so I've got my configuration table and spreadsheet all set up I'm gonna do this in three stages first I'm gonna set up my spreadsheet which I'm almost done with then I'm gonna design my part in the part design workbench and then I'm gonna do a little bit of extra setup at the end so that I can make configuration changes while looking at my part uh, I've almost got my spreadsheet set up but you'll notice that all of these configurations have numbers with no dimensions associated with them. And in general, you don't really want to dimension a part, uh, or you don't really want to design a part with no dimensions. The other problem that this will cause me is that I have my preferences set to millimeters, but all of these are in inches. And so if I don't give it a dimension, it will just assume my preferred dimensions. And so instead of making a flange that's a half inch thick, it will make a flange that is a half millimeter thick. And then if I go to try to if I realize that too late and I try to come back and change all of these dimensions to inches uh, manually, FreeCAD will get a little bit confused. So it's best to just put those dimensions in now. It's very easy to give a spreadsheet dimensions. You just come on up here to the number and with no space type in your dimension. And because my preferences are in millimeters, you can see it automatically switched that inch to millimeters but if you come back up here and see in the uh, content box it's saying I know that that's a half an inch and now it's just displaying it in millimeters because that's my preferences so now I have to do that for all the rest of these and I just have to do that manually so I'm gonna type those in now and that's just how fast I type aren't I amazing and you can see that the current configuration if I call thickness outside diameter inside diameter and so forth it's going to apply the 0 0.5 nominal pipe uh, diameter dimensions to that so now let's uh, go to part design and create our sketch we'll choose the XZ plane okay and now I'm going to draw my outside diameter and you can see that now in order to dimension this we still need to know how to use our expression so I'll hit equals and then I need to know my syntax is to call uh, something from my spreadsheet which I have named spreadsheet and the thing I want to call is the OD that's the alias that I gave to my uh, outside diameter and it gives it uh, the number of millimeters that was in that spreadsheet cool and now I want my inside diameter 
and we'll do the same thing with that. Dot uh, ID. That's my alias for the inside diameter. Okay, there they are, and, and it's giving it to me in millimeters because, of course, it is. This is done. Close. And now I want to pad that sketch, and this equals spreadsheet thick. And there it is. Okay. Okay, that's done. And now I need to draw my bolt hole circle. So I'll select the face, do construction geometry, dimension the bolt hole circle equals spreadsheet again dot uh, BC. Oopsie. BC. There we go. Looks pretty good. Right click off of there, change back to normal geometry, and now I've got to make a circle diameter. And that equals a whole diameter, I believe it was. Yep, that's right. Cool. Let's make that coincident to that. That's fully constrained. Close the sketch. Make that a hole. And choose that pocket. Not a hole, it's a pocket in FreeCAD. So we'll choose that pocket and create a polar pattern. Occurrences equals again spreadsheet. dot num holes there it is okay <laughs> okay uh, it turns out that I made a terrible mistake mistake earlier I, I just fixed it so let me show you what I did um, so we can see that we have four occurrences here now and that is because I fixed my number of holes um, when I go back to the spreadsheet, originally I had given number of holes a dimension, and that, that's a dimensionless quantity. So you probably saw FreeCAD kind of uh, started to think really hard about that, and it didn't know how to solve it. So I had to come in here and correct all of these two dimensionless quantities. But we're back on uh, track now, so let's go to our back to our polar pattern. And now you can see that if I, if I uh, go to my spreadsheet... I have this drop down menu called class 150 dimensions and uh, or I should say the group is class 150 dimensions and I can change my nominal size here so if I click on the 0 0.5 I have all of my nominal sizes and I can change uh, if I change say to 1 and click away from it that changed these numbers up here and now if I go back to my polar pattern uh, it's changed it, but you can't tell. So let's actually try. Let's try something that's going to change the number of holes uh, to 3.5. Okay, it's changed it there. Let's go back to my polar pattern, and you can see it got bigger, and it gave me a bunch of holes. So that's pretty nifty. But the irritating thing here is that I don't have that drop-down menu here, so I have to keep going back to my spreadsheet, changing it there, and then going back to my body to see if it worked. That annoys me a little bit. So let's uh, make one more change to our spreadsheet. And we come back up to our configuration table. And here, uh, instead of property, we will say body dot nominal size and OK. So now let's go back to our polar pattern and we still don't see that drop down menu because I've chosen polar pattern. We've got to come up to body and now we've got our drop down menu here and now if I change it I can immediately see the updates. Click one, I gotta click away from it. Say 3.5, I gotta click away from it and let's see if we go all the way down. 36 got to click away from it and I zoom out and there it is and so I can just 
change this to whatever size I want. And I think that's even niftier than uh, using expressions. I hope this was helpful.